calculus class. Today we are going to learn what is called the squeeze theorem and two very important uh, trig limits. So we're going to start off with a limit uh, or a theorem, a limit theorem. Um, doesn't have a special name or anything, but it says that if a function f is less than or equal to g of x, when x is near a, except possibly at a, and the limits of f and g both exist as x approaches a, then the limit as x approaches a of f of x has to be less than or equal to the limit as x approaches a of g of x. Graphically, we can see with these two functions, f of x equals x and g of x equals x squared. As you can see, just by the graph, at f of x is larger than x squared between 0 and 1, and then it switches. So if we were to um, evaluate this, we would first determine the values of the functions at the given x value. So I'm specifically looking at x equals 2. So as we can see here, f of x at 2 is 2 and g of 2 is 4. So we just showed that f of x is less than or equal to g of x. Now of course it doesn't actually matter. It could be the other way. g of x could have been smaller than f of x. So now we can determine the limits of the two functions by using a direct substitution property. So by doing that, we get that the limit of f of x at 2 is 2, and the limit of g of x at 2 is 4. And now we can conclude that, yes, this, the f limit is smaller than the g limit. So we make a conclusion basically saying since f of 2 is less than or equal to g of 2, then the limit of f of x at, as x approaches 2 is also less than or equal to the limit of g of x as x approaches 2. The squeeze theorem, very important theorem. It's kind of fun too. All right, so this theorem says if f of x is less than or equal to g of x, and g of x is less than or equal to h of x when x is near a, except possibly at a, and the limit of f of x equals the limit of h of x, which we are going to say is some value l, then we can say that the limit of g of x equals l. So quickly pause the video and see if you can jot down what you think this theorem means in your own words. All right, so let's see how well we did. So if we were to look at a graph, we have the three functions. f of x is smaller than g of x, g of x is smaller than h of x. If we were to look around x equals a, we will see that f of x and h of x are approaching the same value and we have g of x in the middle, which means that the limit of g of x is going to be squeezed between the limits of f and h, hence the name squeeze theorem. So generally this means that if g of x is squeezed between f of x and h of x near a, and if f and h have the same limit l at a, then g is forced to have the same limit l at a. Also, um, this theorem is sometimes called the sandwich theorem or the pinching theorem. Your book calls it the squeeze theorem. All right, so how to use the squeeze theorem. The purpose of the squeeze theorem is to help us determine certain limits that are otherwise very difficult to evaluate, such as the following, the limit as x approaches 0 of x squared times cosine 1 over x squared. So the first step is to determine if direct substitution or applying algebra would work. So if I was to plug in zero for x, I would have cosine of one over zero. Well, that can't happen. So therefore, I, it, direct substitution can't work and there's no, really no algebra for me to do. 
So now you're going to determine the range of the more complicated function, typically the trig piece. So we're going to look at cosine of 1 over x squared. In general, we should know that cosine itself is um, between negative 1 and 1. Therefore, the actual function cosine of 1 over x squared is also between negative 1 and 1. Now we're going to multiply everything by the other function so that it will look like what we had, what we're actually taking the limit of. So I multiplied the negative 1 by x squared, the positive 1 by x squared, and the middle by x squared. So now this middle piece is the, our function that we want to take the limit of. This is the function that we are squeezing. We are squeezing this function between negative x squared and positive x squared. Now we're going to determine the limits of the outer functions. So we have the limit as x approaches 0 of negative x squared and the limit of x squared as x approaches 0. By direct substitution, we can see that they're both 0. Therefore, we can make a conclusion, and it needs to be in some type of a complete sentence. The AP test does require your conclusions to be as a sentence. So we would say something like, since the limit of x approaches 0, of x squared cosine 1 over x squared is between these other two limits, then by the squeeze theorem, that's important, make sure you say this name, you can say that this limit equals 0. And this is what a, the graph of these two functions would look like. Here is negative x squared, positive x squared, and here is our function. As you can see, it is being squeezed or pinched between the two parabolas. Now, the two special trig limits. I'm going to give you these limits, and if you really care about the proof, the proof is in your book. Um, so this first one is we say that the limit as x approaches 0 of sine x over x equals 1. The proof is on page 212. So we're going to use this limit property to do this example. So first thing is, it does not matter if it's sine x over x or x over sine x. That doesn't matter. Just it will equal 1. And you have to be careful because it has to be x is approaching 0. Now, the big piece is that whatever is down here has to match what is inside of the sine function. So these two things need to be identical. Now, we have two different sine functions with two different arguments. So I'm going to split them up. And I want this to have an x, or rather a 3x, on the bottom. So I'm going to multiply this fraction by 3x over 3x. Same thing here. I want this to have a 4x up here, so I'm going to multiply this one by a 4x over 4x to get the following. Now I can go ahead and... Um, <clears throat> factor out the 3x and the 4x. So I'm factoring out um, this 3x and this 4x uh, because there is no cons there's no multiple up here. So now I have sine 3x over 3x. So this matches this limit. So I can say that this whole thing is 1. Same thing with this one. I can also say this is 1. So I got 1 times 1 these x's cancel, so my answer will be 3 fourths. The second limit is as x approaches 0 of cosine x minus 1 all over x equals 0. Now it's the same thing as the other special limit. If these were flipped, that is fine, and the argument needs to match the piece on the other side of the fraction bar. All right, <clears throat> this example, we have cosine x minus 1 all over sine x. I'm going to first split it up into two separate fractions. Now, this one, I will need to use the property from before. So I will multiply this fraction by x over x. 
and this I need an x on the bottom, so I'm going to multiply this fraction by x over x. I can go ahead and factor out this x along with this bottom x multiplying sign. As I can see, I have 0 here and 1 here, and these x's cancel, leaving me with leaving me with 1 times 0 times 1, which gives me 0. I will see you guys tomorrow, and have a good night.